Okay, well, uh, good morning, everybody, or afternoon, whatever time zone you might be from. Um, thanks for joining us. Uh, today's the presentation is about uh, reflecting teams and using it in an online environment. I'm, I'm here with my uh, co-presenter, um, Jody Singlinger, and um, she's going to uh, take over here in a minute. She's a doctoral student here in our program, and uh, we've used the reflecting team model in supervision and online environments. So we want to share some of our experiences with you, but she'll give you a little background and history on the reflecting team and on some of the technology issues. And um, and then we'll just talk a little bit about our experiences. And uh, this is, I have to say, this is great. First virtual conference, kudos to everyone who's uh, who's planned this. And I've looked, I've used Second Life for a long time and this is, I was really looking forward to this, so. Uh, this is a, a great idea, and hopefully you'll come away from here with some uh, some ideas and some some information that might help you implement uh, some of the things here we're doing at Duquesne University in, uh, in Pittsburgh. So uh, I'm going to pass the microphone. Unfortunately, we're having trouble getting both avatars up and everything, so we're sharing microphone this morning. Uh, I'm going to pass the microphone over to Jody, and she's going to go through the first part of the presentation, then I'll pick up again at the end. Uh, we'll pause in between our presentations and take any questions that you might have uh, via local chat or if you have uh, audio, we'll take the questions that way too. So, again, thanks for joining us this morning. Let's uh, get started. Oh, hello. <laughs> uh, hi, and welcome. Um, I'm not sure how many of you ongoing examination of the theories, beliefs, and assumptions that contribute to a counselor's understanding of, of the client's issues and um, guide their interventions as well. Um, reflective or, or recursive processes um, are reminiscent of constructivism, um, which departs from the objectivist linear view of um, the relationship with the counselor as the expert. There's a little delay on the slide. I forgot about that. The, the reflecting team process was later modified uh, to be used in supervision, not only in counseling sessions and marriage and family work, but in supervision. And it looks very similar to the, to the uh, reflecting team model I described earlier. However, in this case, the supervisee sits with uh, an interview. This group is often called the interview dyad. That's the left, upper left box you see on your screen right now. So the interview dyad consists of the supervisee and the interviewer, who can be a peer or supervisor. The interviewer asks some basic questions of the supervisee to get at an explanation of the case. Um, he or she asks the supervisee to describe what they're having trouble with, where they're stuck in their relationship or issues with the client. The reflecting team silently listens and, um, and doesn't interrupt, allows the supervisee and interviewer to talk for a few minutes. Then the supervisee and interviewer become quiet. And at that time, the reflecting team begins offering reflections, responses, and reactions to what they heard and observed. And those reflections, again, are phrased tentatively, are of a uh, questioning nature. Human supervision has been um, looked at by several researchers. There's been some qualitative dissertations one by Jane Cox um, that looked at the perspectives of students and instructors who use the reflecting team. Multiple themes emerged from her interviews of students and instructors regarding the different roles of the members, you know, the interviewer, the supervisee, the team members. Um, some developmental uh, themes arose as well. Other work, um, such as uh, Holly mentioned here, um, Found, found themes that were offered during the reflecting process as well. And those included counselor awareness, client awareness, the variety of alternatives offered, 
they found that there was an emphasis on the process and um, they felt the interviewees spoke a lot about the overall feeling of the environment, being comfortable, inviting, relaxing, and disinhibiting. Landis and Young, um, mentioned here as well, also gave a, gave a nod to the collaborative structure and nature of the reflecting team model and found that the reflecting team was advantageous because it provides opportunities for so many students to be involved at multiple levels. And Landis and Young in their study described how to use the reflecting team in a counselor training program for role play and discussion. And they, they actually looked at the family therapy rating scale where the supervisee um, counselor rated himself, was rated by others, and um, found that as a result of the reflecting team experience, students view themselves as more capable they found advantages um, that uh, included the reflecting team increasing the diversity of perspectives and importantly that it allowed for immediate feedback. So the peers were offering immediate feedback and the, the client, um, the supervisee in this case, was able to hear that in a non-threatening way. So feedback has been now, our twist on the reflect that added the technology component. Technology in, in supervision is a new. Um, some of you probably have heard of Butler Constantine that looked at what was, what was success? What is success? Um, the Butler and Constantine. Work, um, looked at email, using email in supervision as a supplement to face-to-face -face supervision. Okay. Um, and we, we've all seen um, how technology has played out in supervision um, by using the phones and recorders, bug in the ear, um, videotape, live live supervision, video monitors. And um, and the most popular use of the technology counseling and supervision right now is using it as a supplement or in a hybrid um, combination. So a combination of face-to-face -face and online meetings. There's a number of advantages to really that the hybrid method and to using technology counseling and supervision. The um, advantages noted by Butler and Constantine, Chapman, and others relate to efficiency. Obviously, we are able to connect to um, a, a wide range of supervisees um, across a large geographical area. We um, save space, distance, travel. And those that don't typically have access to supervision or regular access to supervision also benefit from adding an online component to these interventions. Those in rural areas, those looking for specialties, some is not accessible within their geographic area, those limited by other problems with access, and um, Learn Constantine later mentioned that again, later looked at, at this online supervision and concluded that the online aspect helps build a stronger sense of community um, among supervisees. They looked at uh, peer supervision. Um, studies also not mentioned here by Vaccaro and Lamby, 2007, something a little more recent, explored ethical practice related to using technology in in supervision, 